っちゃセミね<笑>オリンピーパスプレゼンタイズミスワン
to, to increasing the number of the users or to increasing the number of the subscribers. So to we so we'd like to use simulation to ex assess the open and closed strategy for the um, each operator. So we build our model, and here is the outline of our model. And uh, there are four kinds of agents: contents provide agents, user agent, operator agent, and hence uh, manufacturer agents existing in our model. And uh, um, by the interaction, they will emerge to the uh, market model. And there are two operators, operator one, two, three, and this operator has two platforms, platform zero and platform one. And um, and as as the model validation, uh, recently I have increased uh, uh, times that I run the model. So I have run the 100 times of the module and compare with the uh, compare the real data with the uh, simulated data, and just as uh, shown in the picture. Um, the picture, so the data is quite uh, fitting the real data quite well, and so we also calculate some index to show the uh, validation of the model, such as the we have the coefficient of the variation of the uh, root mean square duration. So uh, a small a, a small value is uh, expected. So you can see the value is quite small; it's average about four percent, and also we calculate the Pearson correlation. Correction between the uh, between the uh, simulated data and the uh, real data, and also is you can see the value is quite uh, close to one when when showing that there is a very strong um, linear relationship between the uh, real data and the uh, uh, simulated data. And also here we do some uh, simulation result analysis, and for each operator we tested the 28 strategies. And the strategy is um, is um, designed like uh, as follows. First, we have four kinds of platform strategies: one, two, three, four. And also, we have seven kinds of investment strategies: uh, one to seven. And so we do the uh, and the and we and the twenty-eight strategies is the combination a uh, combination of the platform strategies and the investment strategies. You must buy seven for um, each uh, each operator and uh, and we use this the um, the name index this index and evaluates the uh, so it evaluates the strategies the sub number here sub AUM here means the number of the subscribers for each operator and so the user number here uh, means the um, uh, the total user of the uh, operator's platform and the beta is the COVID, COVID uh, and beta here is the uh, 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 it's the COVID since it since for us to uh, um, adjust it based on the uh, real data, and uh, the beta is calculated as the uh, uh, retention of ratio of the voice services to the value added services services revenue. So you can say for uh, we have three operators, mobile telecom and Unicom. And uh, this data is derived from the uh, annual reports in 2011. And you can see here the uh, beta, also the ratio, ratio of voice service, uh, voice service revenue to value added service revenue is about 2.6 for mobile, and the telecom is about 3.2 to telecom and about 1.7 to income. So we have these uh, three parameters calculated between, based on the real data. And finally, we'd like to compare the um, strategies which is, uh, that we tested. Here, here you can see that so we, uh, for operator one, we have 28 uh, strategies, uh, strategies scenarios. And uh, the purple one, we can see that the, the longest is the, uh, the red one, which means the PS scenario, so which means that um, making all platform closed. It's the best strategy for operator one. And secondly, we also tested about the um, strategies of operator two, and you can see the longest one is the purple one, which means that making all plans from uh, plans from open is the best strategy for operator two. And so the way we have um, um, we have tested it, the um, also the twenty eight. 
28 uh, stretched scenarios for our fight to three, and we can also see that the purple one is the longest one, and which means that the uh, making all plans from open is the best strategy for our fight to three. So here we discovered the best strategy for the uh, for the each operator, and next we'd like to consider about the create critical factors which influence the efficiency of the transform strategies. And uh, we summarized the best transform strategies by the operators. Um, you can see that for operator one, uh, the open strategy is the best one, and uh, the, the number of the contents of the platform one is about 1,829 points, while the, um, for the operator two and the operator three, um, close to plan a strategy is the best. It's the best choice, and the Z, they only have about uh, 500 or less number of contents. So, uh, based on this table, and we. Um, we concluded that the open strategy works better for the operator with uh, more contents, such as operator 1, and the closed strategy works better for the operators with a relatively fewer contents, such as operator 2 and operator 3. So here is the uh, another conclusion of, of our research. And uh, next I'd like to introduce about talk something about the conference I attended recently. Uh, first, in just 2012, I got two questions. The first is that uh, they asked me that what the, what the merit of for an operator to make his platform open. So I give the answer like this. So when we make a um, platform open, more users can utilize the platform. And uh, that's the utility of the plans from derived by the uh, concept supervisor will re in increase, and which also uh, will increase, which also result in uh, re increase the number of the uh, uh, users in the platform. So there is a kind of uh, a positive feedback, which results in a um, large number of users are created in the uh, platform. Here is my answer. And uh, I think the most widely asked the, the questions about that the, the presentation slides of which I give in the tutorials is not quite on a, easy to understand. So we may become part about about the uh, merits of the merits and the, the merits of the uh, um, strategies. And secondly, uh, they ask another question about the uh, cost of switching. But you know, in our model, the content flow ideas, but will switch to other platforms under some condition. And uh, they ask that the, there is a cost when we switch to another platform, uh, I mean the content providers. So what about, have you, have you integrated the cost in your model? So basically our answer is no, we didn't in, uh, integrate the uh, cost in, of the switch into other platform in our model. So, and the reason is, First, the, uh, we focus the platform that we focus on is generally owned by the operators, and uh, in which the main contents is about something like ebooks, music, Java program. So this kind of this are con uh, this kind of contents rather than some. So those content has a rather uh, small technical barrier while switching to other platform. So, which basically means that. Uh, the cost of switching to other platform is not very high, so consequently, we do not implement the cost in our model. So this is our also, and uh, here is the uh, some question I got in just 2012, and uh, about another conference with the uh, International Symposium on Software Computing. So we also got two questions, and the first one is the uh, what is the balance strategy. So the balance strategy strategy generally is uh, one of the investments and strategies that uh, we implemented in our model. So basically there were three factors, platform, network, infrastructure, and uh, and handsets, ter terminals. So balance strategy means that the operator will invest the same amount to the, uh, to the three aspects. 
for example, we have uh, 19 donors, and in the in a balance the strategy, we we'll invest 30 dollars to network, 30 dollars to transform, and 30 dollars to handsets. So this is a balanced strategy. And another question is that uh, the raised by uh, Professor Taylor, and he asked about the what's the difference about the operator one, two, three is. So so now so we give them answer uh, at first. First, uh, actually, the difference is quite uh, obvious, and uh, because our model is based on the uh, real data collected from the mobile combination market in China, and many parameters of the uh, of the of the operator one two three is different. Um, for example, we have uh, we have different um, transform users number currently, and we have different number of the subscribers, and also we have different efficiencies of constructing network infrastructure, uh, which generally means that, for, for example, operator one may cost more um, to build a certain amount of the uh, network infra inf infrastructure compared with other uh, operators. So here is the um, question we got in our, uh, we got in, in, uh, in international sympathy on software computing. And next I'd like to talk to, about the future works. And so, and the first one is that we'd like to conduct a one-way ANOVA analysis uh, and uh, multiple comparisons among the simulation results. And uh, just uh, like here, but we emit directly by observing the graph, we can know that the purple one is the longest, which uh, is longer than other the other, the other, the other stretches. But the static, the, uh, static statistically. We do not have any. Uh, we do not provided any um, evidence to show that the the results of scenario is P scenario four is different from other scenarios. We just uh, observe the results from the graph. So next, we'd like to do some uh, statistic analysis to to show that the uh, the result, the different results of the uh, Different results of the uh, uh, showing the graph do, exi uh, do exist, and uh, so um, so we'd like to use um, statistic software such as um, Jump or uh, SVSS, and um, so and secondly, and um, because. Uh, and certainly, we'd like to, I'd like to start writing the master thesis. And uh, since the deadline is about the end of the uh, December, and uh, here is the kind of um, we have the multiple comparison of, of scenarios. First, uh, for example, we have uh, two variants, and each one has ten samples. And uh, since the uh, mean value is different, that we'd like to test the. Uh, the group, uh, the samples in the variant one and the samples in the variant two to to show that the difference, difference about uh, the difference of the mean values of the two groups is significant as a, as a certain um, as a certain possibility. Um, here's the references, and thank you, and my presentation over. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any question or comment? Are you you mean the canopy strategy? Okay. Uh, generally, um, uh, just assume that we have several. We are. Uh,
so just assume that we have transform 1 uh, A, B, C currently. And the canal strategy is that in order to get a large number of the users, we build a new, we build, build a new platform. M, which can be utilized by the both the user in the platform A, B, C, A, B, C. So this is the kind of canopy, right? That's covering over the other other platform. So here is the general concept of the canopy platform. Do you understand? Okay. And in our research, um, In our research, currently we have, perhaps we have plans for one, plans for two, and plans for three. We have three platforms, which is the network infrastructure of different operators, such as operator one, operator two, operator three. Okay, and uh, only, for example, if we would like to use um, platform two, we must uh, be the subscriber of the operator two. If 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 I was the uh, if I was the, uh, the subs subscriber of uh, operator two, we cannot use operator three, so they are isolated. And uh, the open strategy in our research is that, for example, the operator three, they make the transform when just available, not only these their own subscribers, but also the, but also available for the, uh, for the, um, for the, for the subscribers of operator two and operator three. So, which generally similar to this this architecture, and so it can it can result in the large. Uh, Use a number of the platform. So here is the kind of canopy strategy in our research. You see, purpose. You want to test whether your model is robust or not, or whether it matches the reality. Uh, you know, the, the test that we'd like to contact is to make sure that the difference between the uh, mean value, you know, the mean value of our simulation results, uh, is a significant. Compared to this. It's, it's a, no. Uh, there's, I mean, significance is that 
Fab. So we have uh, we have two. We have two simulation, and each simulation we run the simulation for for example for ten times, and we have sample one, sample two, and sample ten, right? And here also we have we have ten samples because we run the simulation for ten times. A sample means the results. Results of the simulation. For example, 100 or 100 and zero. And generally, we use the we usually mean the average value with the mean value of the average sample one to ten, right? And here is the for example the. The average is v v one, and the average is v two. And in many cases, we get a kind of v one is one hundred, and v two is one hundred and five. So they are different, right? But we, though they are different, we do not, we cannot make sure that whether um, the difference happens for um, occurrence, which which means that. Perhaps the simulation result may be the same, but because of some, um, how is it? because of some, guzantekini koi kekka ni atte ita toyu kanosei mo arimasu. Tatoeba, jisai wa ma onachi nano ni hyakuoju, hyakuo nano ni guzantekini kore wa hyaku ni atte. Iko jikai dake atte da nanzu. De この可能性があって、その、それをまあなんかこういう可能性があって、そのその可能性を引き出すために、こういった例えばTシャツみたいのがを行って、あのこれは確実に異なっていますよということを示すためにこういうやつとあります。Uh, we have uh, perhaps we have simulation the results of of open strategy, and this is the closed strategy. You want to test whether this is the difference? Yeah, yeah, yes. So can you explain? Can you explain the one way and all? A uh, one way about the number is that the uh, because we have uh, in the number we perhaps we have the, we have one way means that the uh, independence. For example, we have uh, we assume that. Uh, the mean value is the function like fx, right? It's a, it's a, it, there is another another possibility another possibility that the the function x fx or y and y we have two uh, variables here, okay. And uh, in in this situation, we in because we our we'd like to um, uh, we'd like to discover the uh, the effects of the transform strategy. So the variable is only the one the strategy where whether they are closed or, or open. So here the function is like a kind of f x uh, rather rather than f x y. So there is only one uh, one variable here. So we call this one way ANOVA. We use one way ANOVA. If we have a FXY with several uh, variables that will influence the results of simulation, we, we will use a kind, kind of multi way or something. So different ANOVA in the, in the analysis. 
can you give a small example? Small example? Okay. Yeah, because, for example, yeah, we only compare the closed uh, and the open, right? The difference, they, they are only different in this aspect. Perhaps we have another factor which is that, um, for example, Uh, all went close and now the um, for example, it's a mouse. Which basically means that perhaps that our simulation is conducted in February or the simulation is conducted in August. So the time of the mouse may also have influence have influence in, in the results. So in this case, we cannot use one way another because we would like to know the uh, the difference only which caused by both op the strategy and also the uh, mouse that we conduct in our uh, simulation. Uh, but uh, I have to stress that because we have, in, in general, in our research, we have four scenarios. Four scenarios, so we'd like to compare the four scenarios. So we cannot use the, simply use two text. Because it's the, two text is used to compare two, um, the two variables, not four. There is a kind of uh, error by right? simply applying the two text. So we like to, generally we have some methods to give the correction uh, based on this. So we can use this in the uh, comparison comparison of the four values.
And then in July, I submitted a paper to KSS 2012. And then after that, from August to October, attached to WCSS 2012, attended the summer seminar, attended the interim presentation. And then after that, I do some work on the social learning with the citizen interactions with some concept work and improve the model a little bit. So in this presentation, I will focus on the KSS paper and also the social learning part. So the title of that paper is the allocative efficiency of e-government user support for different social groups by using agent-based approach. So in this presentation, first I will talk about the research background motivation and what is multi-objective optimization and agent-based model and simulation result and finally the conclusion and future work. So probably you have seen these slides many times, what is e-government? Actually the general definition is that e-government is to use the internet to provide some uh, government information and services. And for the past decades, the services has been involved from offline services like information provision to uh, value-added services such as transactional services. So in this presentation, I will focus on the transactional services, which is more complicated. And the purpose is to offer convenience, efficiency, and transparency to the citizens. But the problem of the government is that the adoption rate is still relatively low, although there are many advantages of using it. And also the user side is overlooked. So actually, in reality, there are many different kinds of user support are provided in order to increase the adoption rate of the government. However, the effectiveness of different strategy might be different for different social groups. So from our previous work, we can see that with increased awareness rate, actually it doesn't help improve the adoption rate of e-government, but the increased user support does. However, for different social groups, the effectiveness might be different. And also we can observe a digital divide even with increased technical support. So it's very natural to think that for those social groups who are not favored by e-government, then should we allocate more resources to them? But if you think in another way that if we allocate more resources to the weak group, then how about other social groups? Will, is it fair for other social groups? So our research motivation is that we try to find an optimized way to allocate the resources in terms of user support for all the social groups. And the purpose is to maximize the citizen satisfaction of using e-government across all the social groups simultaneously. So down to the details is that we try to decide whether and how to allocate the user support and to which social groups such that the satisfaction of using e-government of one social group cannot be improved without degrading the satisfaction of other social groups. Actually, this is the political optimization. And also, we can uh, formulate this motivation as a multi-objective op uh, optimization because we try to optimize multiple objectives simultaneously. So for the multi-objective optimization in literature, there are many different approaches to solve these problems. As the original one is the weighted approach. Basically, they try to optimize a positively weighted sum of all the objectives. But the problem is that the selection of the weights could be, should be quite difficult, and also we cannot uh, represent a complete uh, solution set. And another popular approach is the Go programming approach. And for this one, they try to optimize only one objective while constraining the ob other objectives to be smaller than a target value. But for this one, how to choose a appropriate target value is very hard. So that's why uh, recently the most popular approach is the evolutionary algorithms, the genetic algorithms. And under this one, there are many different methods to solve the multi-objective optimization, like WEGA, NSGA, and in our world, we use this one. 
NSJT because it's the most efficient and well-tested one. So in our agent-based model, we have a set of assumptions like First, we assume the resources in terms of user support is limited. And also, different from previous work, we only categorize the citizens into two social groups. One is favored by the government and one is not, like such as the elderly people, people without too much education, and treated them as the preferential groups. And also, we assume that the citizens are rational to evaluate the government based on their preference of time and effort. And this preference will be different for different social groups. And also we assume that initially all the citizens will be served randomly, but later the resource allocation will evolve based on the GA. So basically we have two types of agents. One is service provider, one is the citizen. So for the service provider agent, basically is the government we define the time and effort needed to complete the service separately, uh, respectively. And also we define for the user support, we define the time consumed by requiring the user support and effort saved by receiving the user support. And also for each of the user support, we define the capacity. That means within uh, each time interval, how many citizens can be served by the user support. And basically, we have three types. And for the citizen agents, we uh, have a set of agents. And for each of the agents, we will have a list of using list of history of using e-government, and also a time actually actually consumed to complete the services, and also the effort. And this effort may define the value of ES, EPS, and the history. And also, we define a preference of time and a preference of e, a preference of effort. And for different social groups, the value will be different. And after they use the e-government, they will evaluate a utility value based on the time and effort and also the corresponding preference. And actually, we have one additional parameter here is that for each of the citizens, we will define an xi. That means whether this is this citizen will get user support or not. So if they get user support, the value will be one, otherwise it will be zero. So for the activities of the agent, for each of, uh, each of the agents, they have a set of parameters. And then uh, with certain probability in this work, they will attempt uh, visit the e-government and try to complete the service process and update the time and effort, update the history, and update the utility value. And then with certain probability PTS, they will seek help from the user support. And for this user support, at each iteration, they will, uh, based on the total utility value of all the citizens, and also the capacity, they try to optimize the user support allocation to achieve a political efficiency by using the and let's create few algorithms. And then based on this evaluation, they will allocate the corresponding limited user support between the two social groups. And then set the value of XI. And then after this process, after they seek help from the user support, the citizen will still update the time and effort, update the history, and then update the utility value. So, you may ask, what is uh, Pareto optimality? Actually, here is the general definition of this one. A solution is said to be Pareto optimal if the value of any objective function cannot be improved without degrading at least one of other objective functions. So in mathematics, that means if we have a solution x, and we have a set of objective functions f1, x, and fkx. In this work, we only have two f1 x and ftx. So a feasible solution x is said to dominate another feasible solution y if and only if for all the objective functions the fi x is not larger than fi y and for at least one objective function the fjx is smaller than fgy. So we can get a political efficiency solution if it the solution is not dominated by any other solutions. 
So for the multi-objective optimization with GAB, objective function is that we try to minimize the total utility of both social groups because we assume that with smaller utility, uh, the citizens are preferred to select the government. And for the GA part, the most three important factor is that the chromosome representation. And in this work, we assume the length of the chromosome is the number of available user support at each iteration. And the element is the number of the citizens who are serving by the user support. So basically, it's one, two, one, two. And the fitness function is the same as the objective function. And for the crossover and mutation operations, is used as defined in uh, NSJA2, actually because GA is quite complicated. So for the implementation part, I use an open source Java-based framework called JMIT. Actually, they uh, implement almost all the uh, GA solutions to solve the multi-objective op 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 uh, multi optimization problems. So this framework is aims to uh, the development and Im implementation of solving the multi-objective optimization problems. So I integrate this part with my own model and do some applications. So to the simulation result, first of all, if we try to do the simulation without any greater optimization, like if we allocate the user support randomly to the two social groups, then you can see x axis is the utility of ordinary social groups, and y is the utility of preferential social groups. So the result is quite random. And if we allocate more resources for the preferential groups, like the elderly people, then we could see that although the utility of the preferential groups is decreased, but the total utility for the other social groups actually is increased, which is not a very good result. So in our first simulation, we tried to do the simulation with different population uh, composition, like we allocate randomly the resources to maybe 40% of the preferential citizens, 30% of the preferential citizens. And generally speaking, that the smaller the size of the preferential group in the whole population, the better results we can get. That means if we allocate more resources to the preferential groups, of course the total utility will be decreased. And at the same time, the total utility of the ordinary social groups will not be degrading. And the, but for the 20% case, let's see if we allocate 50% of the resources to the 20% preference social groups, we can see actually the total utility for the preferential groups does not improve too much, while the uh, total utility of the ordinary social groups actually is getting worse. So we could see if the population of the pref preferential groups is too small, then probably there will be some uh, resources waste. And next one, if we try to allocate the resources proportional to the population, then we could see uh, the random allocation actually is better than the proportional allocation. So maybe from this two diagram, we can see clear that if we allocate 50% of the resources in blue to the 40% of preferential citizens, compared with the proportional allocation, the total utility actually is decreased. But the uh, total utility of the ordinary social groups will be increased. And for the 30% case, if we allocate 50% of the resources to the 30% preferential citizens, we can see that although the utility of the preferential groups is decreased, but actually the utility for the ordinary social groups does not uh, deep increase too much, which is a good result. And for the 20% part, we could see that, again, for the ordinary social groups, if we allocate less resources, then probably they will not be very happy because the total utility is increasing. So we should find a balanced point between different uh, scenarios. And also in all the diagrams, we can observe a robust Plato optimal 
solution. And we can always find a most preferred solution as the turning point at the curve. So actually this is some very simple work uh, focusing mainly on the service provider agent. So the contribution is that we propose a new way, the multi-objective optimization to formulate this kind of problems and solved by the genetic algorithms. And also in every scenario we get a greater efficiency solution that could satisfy the needs of both social groups and then we can always find a most preferred social location strategy. And also hopefully we can provide some insight for the policy makers that how to allocate the limited user resource to different social groups. And of course the future work is that I try to integrate this work with the previous model to see how this optimized user support influence the number of citizens choosing the government. So this is the KSS, or KSS paper. And then after that, I try to consider the social learning in the model because in previous model, the, there is no social learning and interaction among citizens. So in this work, I try to improve the model by including the community-based interaction and also try to consider some e-government learning promotion strategies such as e-government learning groups and self-help counter as the traditional counter. So for the practice, basically I kind of confused with the community of practice and the social network of practice. And for the community of practice, uh, informal definition is that it's a set of relations among the persons, activities, and work, and over time, they will try to get in relation with other tangible communities. So actually, for the community of practice, it focuses on, on strong ties among the members, like family and close friends. And it more focuses on the individual competency and also the practice. And on the other side, for the social network, Social network can be defined as any collection and any collection of actors that try to pursue or repeat in during exchange, and also its lack of a legitimate organizational authority try to arbitrate the disputes. And it may focus on the weak ties like any people can be connected like the internet, and it more focuses on the connection relations of the members. So for the e-government learning strategy, I may think community of practice might be more useful because it's focused on the closed relationship. Probably you can learn how to use e-government from your friends, from your family, but probably you will not learn it from some people you don't know. So in order to achieve this one, I input one more set called the community and each citizen will choose one community at the beginning. And also, sorry, it's not citizen, it's the community. We define three parameters. One is the average effort of citizens from community K, and also a proportion of e-government adopters in this community, community K, and also an adjustment parameter. So for all the non-adopters of e-government, at each iteration, the effort will be involved based on the previous effort and also the average effort of the community the citizen is in and also a density of this community. That means in this community, how many citizens are the adopters of the government and the divide uh, adjusted parameter. And in current states, I only use a constant number, but later I may change the value of this one. So this is the previous uh, state transition of the citizens. Basically, they will compare the utility value of traditional counter and e-government and choose the smaller one to weight it. And then after complete the service process, they will update the time and effort, update the history, and update the utility value. And in this new model, actually, for each of the citizens, especially for those non-adopters. Actually, they will, even they do not use e-government, they will update the effort based on the average community level they belong to. And 
also with certain probability they will attend a learning group, try to decrease the uh, effort of using e-government. And also when they uh, visit the traditional counter, with certain probability they may learn from the self-help counter how to use the e-government and also the effort will be decreased. So I uh, do some simple simulation on this model that first compare a mixed community at unitary community. Here a unitary community means that the community are only composed by group one or group two citizens. Here the group one is the ordinary group and group two is the preferential groups. And no interactions are allowed among the communities and also the citizens will not learn from the environment. So we could see that the x-axis is the time unit and y-axis is the number of citizens at each iteration tracing e-government. So we can see for the group one citizens actually the number is increased quite fast, but for the group two citizens, because probably they did not use e-government and there is no new knowledge coming in from outside world, so the number of people choosing e-government is always quite low. And for a mixed community, that means the community is composed both by both group one and group two citizens. So probably the group two citizens can learn from group one citizens within the same community. So we could see that with the time being, both of the social groups actually, the number of citizens choosing e-government is increased. But for the group one citizens, it could be faster compared with group two citizens. And the next one is kind of closed community and open community. Open community, that means the citizens can change their community number after a certain time interval. So we can get a similar result that all the citizens will uh, choose e-government lawfully. And for the group one still, it will increase faster than the group two uh, citizens. But I'm not sure why there is a sharp decrease of the number of citizens choosing e-government. So probably there is some parameter setting of the model. And also for this one, for the closed community, that means still we set the community composed by only group one or group two citizens, and we do not allow any interaction among the citizens. But uh, we, the citizens can visit the help, self-help counter as the traditional counter. So by using this community, we can see that after certain Point, the number of citizens choosing e-government from group two actually will increase sharply. Maybe it is kind of learning from the self-help counter and they communicate with each other within the same uh, community and then increase the number. So basically the future work is that I try to test the cost of organizing the group learning and self-help counter and try to evaluate the long-term effectiveness of those strategies. And because here in this simulation, I fixed those parameters. So maybe in later simulations, I can try to use different uh, settings of the parameters and to see how the value of the parameter influence the final results. So that's all about my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any questions? Mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to do a of GA, but I don't know why you choose the minus GA to be there. Um, Yes, of is that a matter of yeah, of course that's sometimes actually for different GA actually they use different crossover and mutation operations. And for when they evaluate the population they may use different strategies. So uh, if you are interested I can introduce your paper actually compare almost all the kinds of 
genetic algorithms for the multi-objective optimization. And from that paper, they evaluate the NSGA as the most efficient one. And actually, this one has been used wisely. So the algorithms has been tested by other researchers and proved to be robust. So that's why I choose this one. It's very safe to use this one. Mm -hmm. Go back to the function. Not sure what you mean, but this value ranged from zero to one, and because I fixed the value of because I fixed the value of uh, TS, ES, and TTS and ETS, so if without any random numbers, every time the result could be too close. So and also in reality, this could mean that every time when you use e government the effort actually is just wasting on a small range, but it's not exactly the same. So by including a random number to indicate every time, the practice is different. What is the range of the two? Probably, uh, it depends on how I assess the number. So here I set the number as 1, 2, 5, and 20, and then the utility value is also one to five. So one to six the number depend on like it's one to five ten. Uh yes. But because everyone is with a random number, so if I run the simulation for many times and try to calculate of course I calculate the average value after many times of simulation and try to minimize the influence of this one. Mm -hmm. Is there any way maybe the raw data can evaluate your simulation of that? As in my WCSS paper, that try, I, because the in reality the data is not very sufficient. They only have a what percent what percentage of citizens are using the government. So my simulation actually match with that that one that around. Two to three percent of citizens are using the government, both in reality and in this simulation. And for other data, it's not very easy to find. There probably is no way to find. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to ask that the, uh, what's the probability distribution of the event? You mean the yeah, I just use in Java I use a random number range from zero to one, so I just use the function. Uh, you mean that the mass class? Mm -hmm. Using the mass class? Uh no, you use a random generator every time. Because you use the mass class every time it turns to be within a certain range. Can you show me the formula of calculating the uh, utility of citizens based on utility of community? Can you explain the logic point of this? Uh, the solution? logic point is that now we have many different communities. Actually, in my setting, 100 communities, and in each of the community, there are one to five citizens. So I assume that within this small community, 
you may learn from other members, right? So every member has a effort, and then I try to calculate an average effort. So if the citizen's effort is larger than this one, so it will minus the average one and try to get a difference between these two, and then divide it by some adjusted member and also a kind of density of the, the community that how many number of citizens choosing uh, e-government as the total number of community members. And then each time when you define in this way, the effort of each of the citizens will be evolved based on the average one, and then with the time being, finally they will get the same average effort of each community. That means we try to minimize the difference between members within the same community. This is concept of social learning? Yeah, or is, uh, social learning is, in some other papers, they introduce this kind of concept <laughs> that we see they are not within a community, but they are within a large group that try to minimize the difference among different citizens. And in other way, you can explain that this is how you learn from others. Because I think maybe in social network, when you learn from others, probably you may set a probability randomly how you can match other people and then try to learn from them. But within a community, because the relationship is quite close, so I do not need to meet random citizens within a community. I just try to minimize the difference. Well, uh, the concept of social learning in this case, I think, is that the process of learning from older people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, learning of older people from uh, the youngest who is used to e government. Mm -hmm. So if, if this is uh, your effort is counted at this as this formula, mm -hmm. then for for those who ECT bigger than the mm -hmm. average. Yeah. Uh, for those adopters if they bigger than average then they will not tablet in this way, they will just use the previous function. Ah, so so this to... one only for non-adopters. Okay, so I just consider that if we count oh, this, yeah. this formula, then the, the, the younger people sure, sure. will have... Will decrease uh, their... Yeah, impact. decrease their interest. Okay. Yeah. So only for the non-adopters I use so, the yeah. so formula. Yeah. This formula, I think, yeah. we should have more yeah. condition. Indeed. In the program, I kind of compare it first. Mm. About the random number, uh, you choose the, uh, the ran random class, and do you remember, remember the method that you use to generate the random mm. Yeah, especially to calculate the probability. I use random every time that random dot next double one. So if you yeah. get a random number from zero to one. There is one. one. So the uh, probability distribution will be uniform. Yes. But I think in, in real world, perhaps the distribution is more nearly to, yeah, to, uh, to no, no distribution. Yeah. Maybe in which, um, perhaps you sure. yeah, that's the standard normal distribution and, uh, and there is a method that can simply generate that kind of random Cross thanks to guess okay. Okay. perhaps you can use it in For example, in a community, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sub communities like uh, households or yes. uh, schools or uh, yeah, class or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, 
if you can, uh, in, in your assumptions, the community, the uh, connections in the community is well, well mixed. Every person have the same uh, ability, uh, probability to learn from the others. Even they are, they are, uh, they are in a s different sub community. So, we'll explain sure. the, the logic point of that. Mm, I'm not sure what you mean by sub community. The, uh, for example, a big community, right? In, uh, in this case, your community. Uh, Let's take a small example. Uh, in a in a family, elder people like uh, grandparents, a grandmother cannot use the uh, internet, mm. and his nephew will, uh, her nephew will talk her, uh, teach her to yes. uh, to learn yes. uh, how to use the uh, internet. So in in family, we, in family, uh, we can uh, assume that is a. Uh, Every uh, is a every members in the um, family have the same uh, opportunity to learn uh, from the oh, yes. uh, the youngest. Yeah. Uh, in the case of family is fine, yeah. but in the case of big a uh, big community like a, like a small town, mm. then how can I explain that every people have the same opportunity to commute with the the, the youngest uh, people? So that's why um, I focus on small community. So that means my learning for each community we have some group one citizen and group two citizens. So basically learning occurs within this community. So everyone's effort is trying to uh, evolve based on the average one. So when I mean the interactions among different communities, I mean they change the members. Like maybe member one, first like in community one, and after a certain time interval, it will, he will move to community two. Okay. So in My this way, try to simulate the interactions among communities. That means maybe at this time you are at home, and then at a certain point, you want to work and draw on another community and then can bring some new knowledge. Okay. So my question is that the community in your model, uh, what is the abstraction of that community in the uh, social? If, because here I set the number quite small, one to five, so it could be a family or it could be okay. your working place. So that, that explanation mm. should be included. Because in your community, uh, the co co community uh, in your co community, the communication uh, opportunity for the all uh, members is mm. equal. Yes. That is a well mixed uh, community. So mm. that kind of community, in the for example, in the uh, uh, social life, is a family, mm. or it's a small uh, mother mother friends group, or yeah, it, a small uh, class kind of or something. Uh, so that is the close, abstraction. Yeah, of that. Close to friends. Because your model should be an abstraction of something. Yeah, 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 that's right. yeah. 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 my because this is a new work, so my assumption is that it's close. Uh, yes. It's a family or close to friends. I do not consider a large cooperation or something like that because the interaction will be too hard to communicate. And maybe in that case, it should be the social network of practice, right? So I focus on the community based. They learn the environment from their close friends and the family, so that's the assumption. Yeah, because the uh, formulation, uh, this formulation. Uh, happen for us. Uh, uh, for example, in a network uh, uh, concept, it's a well mixed. Uh, yeah. It's imaging imaging network. Uh, yeah. Means everybody is connected to the other. Yeah. So that's why I do not use this one because it's it's not very simple for the economy for this kind of thing. So community based.
I don't know, how many agents are there in your model? Uh, for this one, in the results, I use 1,000. And, and the community number is 100 or 200. So basically, 1 to 5 people in my community. And I evaluate for 1,000 times. So actually, previously, I set different number of the citizens, but the results doesn't change too much. So to save the power, I use only 1,000. try to integrate the political optimization with the new model. <laughs> yes. It's kind of this one. Like this one is the previous with community based uh, interaction and this is within the Simulation and use the genetic algorithms to optimize the resource allocation. So I integrate these two parts together. And we can see with the time being, the result is quite similar, but the interesting point is at the first beginning, in the without the genetic algorithms, I'm not sure why there is a kind of drop of the number of citizens from group one. But if with GA, because we try to satisfy the uh, satisfy the needs of both social groups, so here actually the the line is quite is smoother than this one, and also the distance between group one and group two is smaller, and also also for this one. It's different simulation. So, in general speaking, that with the genetic algorithms, the difference between the group one and the group two tends to be closer. And if I compare the total utility, actually both of them use the genetic algorithms. But if I do not use genetic algorithms, the utility is is like this one is like the, this one is the group one and this one is the group two, if without any genetic algorithms. But with GA, it's quite interesting, I'm not sure why is there is a crossing point like this one. So probably it's, they try to minimize the difference between these two. The speed might be I still try to figure out what's the difference here. Generally speaking, maybe with GA, I, the I, I think that you I think you cannot uh, uh, find some different point from that kind of graph. Yeah. Maybe you should check all agents. Check all agents. You can get the uh, result, maybe all agent result, mm -hmm. and arise from some keywords or mm. whatever, then you can check what happened in that point. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I still don't not, I did not understand why you compared it to. Because uh, uh, in GA, uh, first I said, uh, allocation service mm. is on the service provider, provider side, mm. and learning is on. Uh, uh, both of them are learning. I include the social learning in both cases. But in without the GA, that means when you seek for user support, it's randomly distributed. And for this GA, that means they try to satisfy the need of both social groups. So they will evaluate the resource allocation. So there is no difference. Like if with GA, If 
supposed to be A actually every time the user supports build evaluate the user supports the location. So without GA then this this part is randomly distributed according to certain So for this one is <coughs> for this one is based on based on this part. I integrate the J A with this part. It's like this model is the most basic one plus the social learning from the community. And then this is this one. And then with genetic aerosols, that I that means I input input the GA for the user part. Maybe in this diagram. This is the original one. This is the original one, but with GA, every time they will evaluate the utility and try to allocate the numbers and the set and stuff. So that's the difference between that two diagrams. Uh, X is the time unit mm -hmm. I because in GA I evaluate for one thousand times, so mm -hmm. here I run the simulation for one thousand times as well. And Y is the number of seasons choosing evaluated at each iteration. Ah, okay. So probably uh, uh, the number of Because this is a uh, initial work, so some of the parameters are fixed. So probably the result is not very really meaningful. But we can see a trend, like in, such as this kind of if there is a community of all the old people, then probably they will never use the government forever. But with Post community that means if they live in a family and they can learn from other people, then probably the number of citizens will increase. But only the speed will be different. Some kind of this one. And also, the interesting part is this one with the self help counter, that even with the closed community, the number of citizens from group 2 will increase, then probably we can evaluate the cost of the, this kind of learning group and see in long term what is the effectiveness. Maybe social learning group at the first beginning is very effective, but like the self-help counter because the investment is small, but uh, in long term the effectiveness will be, will be higher. This kind of Is that uh, in resource allocation, the purpose of resource allocation is to mi minimize the both uh, efforts of two, two social groups. Yes. So, and, yeah, and uh, the social learning is to minimize the gap between uh, the effort of those of the two groups, right? The average. I mean. Mm. Yes. We, we lose the gaps. Mm. So, 
in the simulation, uh, uh, simulation uh, result of, uh, with uh, GA and without using mm -hmm. GA. So because I see the formula, formulation of the calculating the uh, effort of the citizens and the community, and I, this is very strong, uh, a strong, uh, um, I mean, a strong form, uh, influence on the uh, each, uh, effort of citizens. Yes, that's right. So if you compare this with the uh, resource allocation algorithm in GA, you can see that this social learning is very, very strong. So easily, and uh, so it, this explain that the uh, the effect of GA with uh, with the simulation reason is yes. very uh, yes. I mean, just small, the, very little. Yeah. Because Maybe. the social learning, the effect of social learning, is much more. Yes. Uh, yes. Much more. Mm. But it's just significant. Mm. But it's just we can still include that part of the mm. although the yeah. effect is not very significant, but try to build an overall model, holistic model, try to integrate different parts together and see how they influence each other. I don't want to say about the learning system, but uh, to, th uh, to think about the data sensitive portion mm -hmm. of uh, using the agent based approach in social mm -hmm. programs, mm -hmm. you have to think about the uh, reality. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I don't worry about the uh, students learning algorithm. Maybe I think it's fine, mm -hmm. but the uh, service side, mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> for for I don't know the situation, the real situation, but uh, to think about the government system, mm -hmm. maybe they check the, for example, how many people use it, the uh, traditional mm -hmm. one, how many users use the uh, e-government, and then check the number and compare them, then they will, I think, uh, decide what to do the next step. So maybe you should think that kind of things into your model. Yeah. For example, in, in Japan, Japanese case, mm -hmm. uh, if I go to the counter, maybe they will give me the, some papers or letters about how to use the e-government system. Yes. So maybe that kind of things you should uh, think it, uh, put into your model. Uh, and uh, and uh, optimization is uh, maybe the dream world. <laughs> Yeah. So. The, <laughs> the optimization part is that in one meeting with stakeholders and that he said uh, if uh, you allocate more resources to the old people, then how about other people? Will they be satisfied? And then you should try to achieve a political optimization of that one. So based on that meeting, I do that part mm -hmm. of the work, but actually after that he forgot about it, so. So, 
the result of this uh, today's presentation is important to compare the maybe the real maybe the real estate policies. Mm. Yes. And the point, the kind of point, maybe become the second part of your doctor thesis. Compare the dream, dream strategy mm. and also the realistic strategy. Yeah. So you should maybe think about the government policy. Yeah, I feel like consider a little bit of the government policy. Actually, like this one, yeah, it's like I, how countries, <laughs> like you say, mm -hmm. when you go for the traditional counter, then probably they will lead you to some machine, and yeah. then you can learn how to use it. So actually, for this one, actually, it integrates. Yeah, and the, the, the importance is that if, uh, if, if the government did that kind of things, mm -hmm. then what, what happened in the next year or Yes, yes, you, yes. So you should consider the result of uh, using the, the kind of thing. Yes, just like this one. Yeah, right. This one is the results, nothing, actually with nothing, and only the self-help counter that and for group one, like after 100 times yeah. minutes, then suddenly increase the number. And one more thing is that you uh, that if you adopt that kind of things, mm. for example, notice the citizens in the traditional counter, mm. how wrong? Maybe if the half of the group, yeah. uh, in your case, maybe the half number, of, uh, half people mm. in the groups know that system, maybe government don't need any more to 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 um. send the rate or something. If the running starts in the group, maybe government do not need to do anything. Mm. Yes. So if you think about the cost, yes, that point is very important. Maybe twenty percent is enough, I think, or fifty. But I don't know. You can check from the simulation. Yeah. For this one, I the probability of using self-help countries. 50% is always random whether or not it's successful or not. Mm. So I think if the government see your model, your system, then what we should do? Maybe <laughs> they ask you. I mean, realistic, realistic, realistic strategy. Realistic strategy. Mm. I may check the Hong Kong economy. Mm. Uh, the but I think the government policies uh, depends on the role. Yeah, no, of the government or the, uh, you know, that the government, if the government uh, faced with the uh, uh, step of deciding what to do, mm. maybe the, they have to uh, open the meeting, then they no. decide yes or no. Yeah. But the, that kind of meeting, they will decide, make a new law to do the policy. Uh, yeah. Mm. Then it's becoming more complicated. You're not complicated. Just yeah. check the realistic goal. Uh, yeah. And yeah. yeah, and then you should just what you do is just adopt that kind of strategy into the model. Mm -hmm. Then you can compare the optimal one and the realistic one. And then maybe you can uh, propose oh, that kind of process may be better or not good or something. The data and for the uh, you don't need to get the data. Yeah. 
but for the policy is kind of maybe the policy is for example okay make the older people to use the e-government mm. maybe government needs some money to open the school yeah, or those kind of mm. maybe that's the realistic policy mm. okay check the yeah maybe you can imagine by yourself if you're the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I can imagine, but the point is whether it's useful or not. <laughs> they didn't ask, oh, your strategy is so perfect in the simulation, but in the reality, how you can apply yeah, it. Right. Yeah. There are many other problems like the implementation of the policy, so many parties are involved. So. So, next step is try to compare with the identity case. Okay, thank you for presentation. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. So, today's seminar is over. Thank God.